Joining us now from uh, Orlando is Jim West, a licensed mental health counselor and president of Total Life Counseling Services. Jim, um, what are some of the uh, grief coping mechanisms uh, you can offer survivors? Because we are hearing their stories now and, and words like guilt, uh, fear, sadness are coming up. You know, those are all, this is a horrific event. Those are all normal feelings, normal emotions people are going to feel. There's not a whole lot we can say as mental health professionals to make the pain go away at first. I mean, there's, of course, time heals, and it's, of course, it's cliche, but it's true. Um, you know, they need to look for a good support system. I remember hearing the story this morning, uh, or actually last night, of a, a man who carried out one of his friends, and uh, his friend died in his arms, and he also lost his partner. Uh, and, he, you know, he decided not to go back to his apartment he went to a friend's house and stayed there so that he wouldn't have to see that partner's things, the bed. He could, you know, try to change some of those routines that reminds him of those people that, you know, that he, you know, the friends that he lost. We also recommend, you know, uh, having a support group, being with, being with people that, you know, they can talk to. A support group could be a, a, a professional support group for mental health, for grief, but also just being around friends to be able to tell the story. And, the more we tell the story, the you know, the better we'll start to feel about it. It still will be emotional. It still can cause tears and pain in talking about it, but it, it can really help to 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 get through those get through those feelings. What happens psychologically when uh, you're faced with death and when you're seeing death around you in such a violent way? You know, that's a tough one. You know, as therapists, we try to relate, and sometimes from personal experience, we can relate to those things. But so few people can say they've been through something like this, so, such a horrific event like this. And so it's really hard to know what somebody's feeling unless we've actually been through something like that ourselves. And again, it's just such an isolated incident that it, there's so few people that can really understand the tremendous pain that these, these, uh, these individuals are going through. And how do they cope in coming months? What's the process here with these kinds of memories? Well, the, the, they want to remember the person that, that they lost, but it's first they want to change those routines over the next few days, maybe the next couple of weeks, just to not be around those types of situations that happened. They need to turn the TV off, you know, not watch uh, the news, unfortunately. I know it's not good for news stations ratings, but it's really important to just, you know, uh, turn off the TV Okay. Uh, but talk about their feelings, uh, but create, eventually they'll start to create some memories of those people and have pictures of the friends that they lost and, and remember the good times. And that's, that's another part okay. of that healing process. Jim, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Sarah.